My name is Dr. Azia. Uh, I'm an artist, a uh, neuroscientist, and psychiatrist. I study how the brain represents social information, you know, computes it, decodes it, and how tools like music, mindfulness, and psychedelics can shift uh, social representations to drive social connection, treat mental health symptoms, and help us solve coordination and polarization challenges. This work is important to me because of, you know, my experiences and the things that I observe as a, a psychiatrist, as a person of color, you know, work, you know, moving through the world and seeing that many of the ways in which we've approached psychiatry um, are not, you know, helping people and the mental health crisis is getting worse, right? And we're now in like a loneliness epidemic, but we all know like we've been to a concert or a show and felt like connected to people in the context of music. I think we're now beginning to really understand sort of at the level of the brain, how is something like harmony, for instance, overlapping with subjective feelings of social connection in an area like the angular gyrus, you know, and how is something like harmony potentially shifting things like neural synchrony, you know, between people's brains when they're interacting. And so that kind of research, you know, I think is um, allowing us to now really better understand that even at the neural level, there seems to be this physiological you know, connection between features of music and ways in which we connect and, and behave, you know, in synchrony with each other. Thinking about something like music in the context of communities that have been historically marginalized, I think is important because music has always been sort of part of the communal and collective forms of healing. I think, especially when you think about people of African descent coming through things like the Middle Passage and slavery and the development of the spirituals, how that leads to things like jazz and gospel and hip hop and soul. And there's all these ways in which people have been able to form community and identity and new language, you know, to express, I think it's now time to start thinking, well, how do we integrate these natural and native forms of healing in a way that is scientific, you know, into our, uh, our current medical system so that we can map on things like technology to these more sort of intuitive and natural forms of healing that have already been a part of people's culture. And I think we see that reflected in the research, right? People are excited to participate in studies and be a part of our trials because music is a part of it and they're interested in, in, in coming together with people and making music. I think using your science and um, psychiatry as vehicles to understand how can we use this in society to solve these large, you know, challenges and, and, and existential threats, I think, you know, is really important. It's something that cuts across everyone in society because these are problems that we have to solve as humans. Mm -hmm.